Good day and welcome to Global Development Issues with Ari Ivo. In today's program, we shall be looking at the status of migrants in the Sahel region of Africa and the various ramifications of desertification and other fallouts of climate change in the region. Current estimates predict that by the middle of the century, the world could see anywhere between 25 million and 1 billion climate-related migrants. The IOM defines environmental migrants as persons or groups of persons who, for compelling reason, for sudden or progressive change in the environment that adversely affects their lives or living conditions, are obliged to leave their habitual homes or choose to do so either temporarily or permanently and will move either within their country or abroad. But it is very rare climate change will be the only reason a person or groups of persons will decide to leave their home. The Sahel is the eco-climatic and biogeographic zone of transition between the Sahara Desert in the north and the Sudanian savannas in the south. It stretches across the north of the African continent between the Atlantic Ocean and the Red Sea. The Arabic word Sahel literally means shore coast, describing the appearance of the vegetation of the Sahel as a coastline delimiting the sand of the Sahara. The Sahel covers parts of the territory of Senegal, Southern Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Southern Algeria, Niger, Northern Nigeria, Chad, Northern Cameroon, Sudan, including the Darfur region and the southern part of Sudan, and Eritrea. It is bordered on the north by the Sahara and on the south by the less arid savanna. There was a major drought in the Sahel in 1914 caused by the annual rains far below average that caused a large-scale famine. The 1960s saw a large increase in rainfall in the region making the northern drier region more accessible. There was a push, supported by governments, for people to move northwards, as the long drought period from the 1968 through 1974 era began, the grazing quickly became unsustainable and large-scale denuding of the terrain followed. Like the drought in 1914, this led to a large-scale famine but this time it was somewhat tempered by international visibility and an outpouring of aid. This catastrophe led to the funding of the International Fund for Agricultural Development. In June to August 2010, famine struck the Sahel. Niger's crops failed to mature in the heat and famine occurred. 350,000 faced starvation and 1,200,000 were at risk of famine. In Chad, the temperature reached 47.6 degrees centigrade on June 22nd in Faya Lajo, breaking a record set in 1961 at the same location. Niger tied its highest temperature set in 1998 on also June 22nd at 47.1 degrees centigrade in Bilma. That record was broken the next day on June 23rd when Bilma hit 48.2 degrees centigrade. The hottest temperature recorded in Sudan was reached on June 25th at 49.6 degrees centigrade in Dangola, breaking a record set in 1987. Niger reported on July 14 that diarrhea, starvation, gastroenteritis, malnutrition and respiratory diseases had sickened or killed many children. Recently, many dustums are a frequent occurrence as well. During November 2004, a number of major dustums hit Chad, Nigeria, and Northern Cameroon, originating in the Bodele Depression. This region is facing even more threats today, as governments are meeting to highlight the problem to the international community following more frequent migrations into areas that are already facing threats like Niger. Breath. 
There are over 9 million people who could potentially be impacted by the lack of access to food as we move into the lean season in June. We've started the work on the ground. We have an opportunity to ensure that this crisis does not become a famine. Elle aussi, elle a fui avec ses enfants. Actuellement, elle ne sait pas où se trouve son mari. What we are facing here is a deadly combination of drought with a dramatic food security problem that WFP is addressing with an enormous effort and conflict. Conflict in Mali with already almost uh, 160,000 refugees in Niger, in Mauritania and in Burkina Faso. We shall now watch a clip courtesy of Provention on how people are adapting to climate change in the Sahel. They are using very simple methods to survive, like clean energy sources, trying to retain moisture in the soil in order to prevent erosion, the planting of trees, as well as the use of organic um, pesticides which are more friendly to their environment. The global climate is changing. One of the areas where this is being felt most acutely is the Sahel region of West Africa, on the edge of the Sahara Desert. The population are largely dependent on agriculture and livestock, so the three to four months of summer rains are vital to survival. If these alter, food shortages and disasters can follow. This year we had floods in August. It was a disaster. Then suddenly the rains ended, but farmers needed two more rains for the crops to grow, but they never came. Now you are never sure when the first rains will start and the last rains will end. The people of the Sahel are used to variable rainfall, but recent studies suggest that summer rains are ending earlier, droughts are now seen in two out of every five years, and incidences of flash flooding have increased. These all destroy harvests. When I was young, this area was already very dry, but not as dry as it is now, which makes it difficult to grow good crops. And when the rain comes, it comes with such strength that it washes away all the nutrients from the land and nothing can grow or ripen. Climate change is likely to lead to an increase in these extreme weather conditions. The best way of averting disaster is to help people adapt to these new conditions. This has been put into practice by a local NGO in Burkina Faso, who are using tried and tested disaster risk reduction activities with a few new initiatives to help communities adapt to the changing climate. The effects of climate change, combined with deforestation, can trigger a cycle of erosion leading to desertification. But simple techniques can help to retain moisture, reduce erosion and support the growth of crops, for example planting trees. And the rock wall and the technique called demi-loons or half-moons you see being constructed here. This technique is called demi-loon. You use it to trap rain when it falls. When it rains, the water runs between the two demi-loons and flows into the next one. The hole holds the water for some days so the seeds can grow. This is very dry land. Before I started using these techniques, you couldn't find grass or trees. These techniques nourish the soil and retain the water so that trees and plants can grow. It is now rejuvenated and very green again. Simple water conservation and irrigation mean that farmers are no longer reliant on the timing of the rains and can even plan for more than one harvest a year. Formerly, we were doing our gardens with wells, but we noticed the water from the wells was not enough, so we contacted the NGO and asked for support to build a dam. Thanks to the dam, our income has increased and I have doubled the plot of land for cultivation. So with better income, I can send my kids to school. 
fertilizers and pesticides can be made locally and organically to maximize the growth of crops without harming the environment. Biopesticides are made from a mixture of ground up nuts and water. Contrary to what others are doing, here we are using organic pesticides. The bees go around the vegetable garden pollinating and the pesticides don't bother them. While there they are using chemical pesticides, especially in the cotton fields where whole populations of bees have been killed. Improved farming techniques can combat the problems caused by climate change and also increase production. And increasing off-farm opportunities is another solution. With new ways of making a living, communities are no longer totally reliant on rain-fed agriculture for their livelihoods, making them more resilient to climatic shocks. This is a share butter production unit. We're working with women from poor families. Burkina Faso is a very poor country and poor people have trouble getting an income. This project helps women make an income to take care of themselves and their families, paying for health care, school fees and clothing. With development comes an increased need for fuel, but with it comes a responsibility to promote clean and sustainable technology. Clean energy sources such as solar power are non-polluting and have many benefits. They help to reduce deforestation and can improve people's livelihoods and well-being. These solar fridges are meant for rural areas. Health professionals are able to keep vaccines safely. In any case, in urban areas it can also be used for health products, including vaccines and other stuff such as food. These fridges are made in our workshop. We also make other devices like dryers for fruit and vegetables, water pumps for market gardens and incubators for egg production. Solar panels can also provide clean energy to poor communities not on the grid system. We have 18 solar panels on the roof. Each solar panel is connected to a regulator which charges the batteries. For example, the traditional profession in these villages is basket weaving. Before they made one or two baskets a day, but now they have solar lighting. They can have an extra five to six hours to make baskets. Economically, this is very good. Between solar power and oil lamps, there is no comparison. Solar power is ecological and there is no pollution. In the long term, it is ten times more economical than using oil. Climate change is a serious issue facing the people of Burkina Faso. Their future depends on how well they can adapt to these new realities. As topsoil is eroded and washed away and crops are destroyed by overgrazing, deserts in the region have begun to expand and are expanding very rapidly. And records are showing a shift of sand 60 miles south into the area. Planning on climate change must be linked to rural and urban development schemes as well as to economic and social factors such as religion, politics and interests of stakeholders within and outside the region, which is also seen as a resource platform for a necessary uh, global fight against terrorism or to supplement industries that depend on phosphates as well. The Sahel region of Africa is very rich and could be a platform where tested practices to combat climate change can be replicated in other regions of the world in order to help make the world a more healthy place to live in. Many people around the Sahel region are facing not only threats from a diminishing rangeland or the fallout of climate change, but are also facing religious and cultural threats. Other subpopulations are also drifting away from their traditional setups. In northern Nigeria, for instance, reports have suggested that over 200 villages have disappeared within the past few years. So to save the Sahel region of Africa, it is expected that people will work together in synergies and also resources that are aimed at reclaiming or irrigating the land will be used judiciously as well as long-term solutions between partners within and outside the country will be for the benefit of the poor people who are dying every day. It has been a real for global development issues. Thank you for watching.